Sorry, okay, hello. Um, hello, 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 okay, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so, okay, hi, 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 it's been a long time, long time. Let's see, I'm, okay, so I'm, I think you can hear me, yes, or can I? Yeah, we can hear you. Great, okay, thank you. Um, thank you, okay, and I take it you can see me, and I take it you can see, you can see the board, right, which is P203, FH, oh, someone's here, huh, sorry, hold on. So that, I can't even read my own handwriting, that's really bad. I even know what it's saying, and I can't read Right, and this will say FA20, but um, uh, okay. So uh, I'm still feeling like we're getting this course off the ground. Um, and that is not you, me. Um, that is, you've now done a ton of work. There was a ton of physics that was assigned to you at, at a ton that went ahead of anything we've said so far. And I know that, believe me. Um, and, and I've seen the work and you have not gotten it back for me. Let's just start with there. Like you're, you're way ahead of me now, which is great. That is, I have a lot of stuff to go over and get back to you. The course still has to keep going forward and you'll still have work, of course. But, but it's much more now up to me to catch up with where your heads have been than the other way around. Um, and there's still one more step of catch up I have to do to do that. That is to say, um, physics will look more and more like physics, like you saw by that third assignment. It, 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 it starts to get, I don't know if it's hard or not, but it certainly starts to seem more like math -y, science -y, I think, by the third assignment. And it'll look more and more like that as we progress. But what, um, what some people like math and some people don't, I used to not and now I do. Um, what I want everybody to see is how all the math is just a way of, of expressing all ideas that really can be thought of in English and, and for many of us thought of a lot better in English or Chinese or Hindi or whatever, but that these the, really math is just shorthand for a bunch of words that are in our head. Um, and I'm still trying to bridge the gap of getting us from the original words that began physics to the math that you need to solve all these problems. Like I know that that bridge has not been made yet, I guess, to be clear. Um, I, uh, and there's gonna be one more day of me trying to catch up to you, all of which is to say, if it's not literally today, it'll be as of tomorrow, the next class, that you'll see me walking through step by step the solutions to these problems. Like, I don't want you to think you're just doing them in a vacuum. We will start walking, going through them like a recitation, like not, I mean, and of course, skipping some steps where everybody knows what's going on, but I will start walking through them step by step and certainly taking questions along the way. I just have to put in ideas first in order to do that. And I know that the ideas that I'm putting in right now may seem to a lot of you to have nothing to do with anything. Like, why were we talking about an imaginary train? And then, okay, I sort of see, you might say to yourself, okay, I sort of see why the imaginary train is related to the actual planet Earth. But how is that in any way helped me solve these mathy looking problems that are all taking place on Earth? All fair concerns. Like, I, I, there are some of you who have done all the homework and are like, what the heck is going on in this course? How does this have to do with anything? And some of you were struggling by the time you get to the third problem because I haven't told you how to do it. All understood, and it will connect soon, I hope you'll find. But, but certainly, if nothing else, if you've done the homework, I see that you have. If you have it, you still totally can. Please, as long as the portals are open to receive, you can still submit. And I'm not saying anything about any late penalties or anything like that yet. Just 
So don't worry about that. And anything I say today that might help you can use to do the homework now. Having said all that, the one, because I still wanna catch up with you guys, we're gonna do something a little bit unusual. We're gonna take advantage of this Zoom business a little bit. I'm gonna tell you right now that in the, and this may be confusing people, I'll try to say it twice. Um, uh, be, your next homework assignment before you do any more homework will be tonight or tomorrow to watch the lecture that I post from today. Let me be more clear about that. What I'm saying is we have two, we, well, I teach two sections of this physics course. In the period right before this one, what I did was a bunch of English, well, a bunch of pre-mathy stuff to connect planet Earth to the laws of physics that we're using to solve these problems. Like I connected those dots in that lecture and I'm sure it was very boring to everybody and they didn't get a chance to discuss much and it didn't directly address the homework problems until the end, which I'm sure frustrated everybody. But I, for reasons that you'll eventually see, I have to do that. So I did that in that class. I'm not gonna do that in your class. In a moment, what I'm gonna just start doing is diving into the homework and going over it the way I think people probably want and deserve to see. We're gonna start just going over the homework question by question right here and now in this section. But I wanna make it clear to everybody that by doing that, we're sort of skipping a step that I need you to see. So I need you to watch that step tonight or tomorrow that happened in the other class. And then I'm gonna tell, they have to watch this lecture. I mean, maybe this is not a new idea, but I don't do this often. So I'm gonna say right now, we're gonna start going over the homework, but please understand that the next thing you have to do, like to really get good at this homework and get good at these problems as they get harder is you're going to have to watch the lecture. I'm going to post two lectures today, one of you and one of the other guys. Please watch the other guys because I did completely different material there. Um, and I'm going to say the same thing to them. Does that make any sense? When I, can I just get a, like a thumbs up that what I'm saying makes some sense? Uh, that's one. I see the chat. Oh, right, 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 right. No, great, great. Okay, and I just got a private thing that, it, oh, and thank you, thank you. Okay, so I see the thumbs up. And yes, yes, believe me, we're definitely already at the stage where if you try to do the homework like a good person, like technically in all the homework, technically I believe that I gave any definitions in the sheet that you would need in order to get a right answer. But that doesn't mean that's enough for a lot of people. It's very possible to have tried at the homework and to have hit a wall at some point and just then tried your best and not knowing how to do it. And that is what I'm here to help. Like, yes, yes, yes. I mean, in physics, in other words, we try first and then we go over the next day. It's, I don't teach it and then you practice it. You practice trying something that you don't know how to do and then we go over it because we're all trying to get better at problems that we don't know how to solve. So, but that really does mean anything that you tried, if you hit a wall, I'm about to right now try to help with that. Hopefully this will be worth it to you. Um, and your goal on each homework is just to try to get a little farther with it without the confidence of knowing exactly what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I, I, we're going to start doing this now. Just please watch the other lecture. And I think you guys are getting the better end of the deal. I'm sure more of you would rather right now sit through what we're about to do than what the other class had to sit through, but we'll flip it some other time. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to start with the sheet. I'm going to start with the sheet number line. I believe that was the first sheet that I signed, right? And you're going to have to help me also. It's hard for me to flip back and forth. So I'm doing this by memory. You'll have to help me if I'm on the wrong question or if I call it the wrong thing or whatever. Um, but I believe the whole sheet starts off, and again, well, can I just get confirmation? Number line is the first homework that we're going over. Y yes? Is it, is it? Great, thanks. And believe me, once I write it down and what, like, if, if everybody thinks a certain answer is obvious, then we won't dwell on it for long, but we want to just see what the answers are in it. So, all right, the premise is that you're looking at the front of the room, there's this big number line at the front of the room, like on the floor, and there's a zero labeled somewhere and everything on one side of that zero is called positive. Everything on the other side of that zero is called negative. It, this is how we view the world. This is now not hypothetical. This is like actually how we view the world in physics. We view the world as consisting of three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. But we, the way we analyze the three dimensions is we analyze them one at a time. So we're starting we're looking at a one-dimensional space. Technically, this is introduction to what is called, this is this topic that we're doing, this first topic of physics, is technically called one-dimensional kinematics, where kinematics technically means motion, but everything in physics is motion. So really what we're doing is defining our terms of motion for one dimension of space while the clock ticks throughout one dimension of time. Okay, so this is our setup at the front of the board. We're calling 
And notice we picked a zero point arbitrarily, but once it is zero, that everything on one side is one direction, everything on the other side is the other direction. We arbitrarily picked which is which, but we're gonna stay with it consistently. And all these arbitrary choices we're making and then sticking with are all an outgrowth of recognizing, huh, we can arbitrarily view the earth as sitting still or we can, while the sun moves past it, or we can arbitrarily uh, view the earth as uh, moving past a still sun. But whichever one we do, we're then, oh my God, I just lost the connection. Sorry, did I just lose, did I just lose all of you? Oh, okay, okay. Um, so we make an arbitrary choice of zero and an arbitrary choice of positive and negative, but then we stick consistently with it ultimately because of what we realize physics allows us to do that. The minute we believe that we're standing on a planet that's going 65,000 miles an hour all the time is when we realize, oh, we can, okay, all these things are comparisons, right? But that's the other lecture anyway, here's the setup. And then I believe according to the setup, we're watching some object move through space and time. The object happens to be the professor or whatever, the spazzy dude at the front of the room. And I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the purpose of this example, that professor starts at position positive four. Is that, someone better correct me if I'm wrong about that, but does he start at position positive four? Yeah, no? he does. Yeah. Okay, thank you, all right. And that's on purpose right away to get us used to the fact, well, you know, you don't have to start at a place called zero. Um, wherever you start is where you start. It, okay, so that's where he starts. And then I know we're, we're just, we're told a bunch of things that I try to put in this picture. This is just an informal picture that captures the facts of the problem. It's not solving anything. I'm just like reminding myself of the facts, but I do think everybody should do a thing like this when they work out problems, even if a diagram is provided. So if I'm remembering correctly, first the professor travels from the four, um, no, excuse me, oh, sorry, someone just had to the right. Travels from the four uh, to the negative two, is that correct? Or uh, someone tell me. Um, he travels the first, that's right, okay, thank you. All right, travels from the, oh. right. so he travels from the four to the negative two, then he travels back in another stage from the negative two back to the four, and then he travels from the four all the way, I think, to the negative five or some crazy. Um, is it? Okay, thank you. So I didn't give myself quite enough room for that, but, he does it. And these are three different stages of motion. Again, this is not a formal diagram. This is a picture. But lastly, I believe um, uh, uh, that the first trip took it, it goes three seconds, then two seconds, or two seconds, and then three. I can't remember. Uh, the, the first segment took how many seconds? Three. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So it's like this, like this. And I think this is right. So stop me if, mm -hmm. is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's the situation. Now, all of this, it is a very, I mean, it's an important problem. It's very, po oh, three, two, three. Thank you very much. Totally see that. That's great. Thank you. Um, now, there, I, you know, I'm going to try to make this as interesting as I can. I don't want to, I don't think this is super interesting. It's just important. We're defining our terms. We're just, all these exercises are to make sure we're on the same page. Again, doesn't mean it's easy, but also doesn't mean it's exciting, I know. Um, but the, all right, so the very first question of the whole thing, I guess it's called question, Question one of the whole thing is, um, uh, you'll have to remind me, is it what's his total distance for the entire journey? Is that the very first question? Yeah. Okay, so the total distance, so this is just in terms of definitions, like distance is, well, I'll just say, it. I mean, if you get the right answer, I think the total distance for the whole uh, uh, thing is 21, um, I think these are feet. It's given in feet, not meters, which is okay. So, so the answer to the whole first one is 21 feet. I'm just literally adding up. I'm saying, well, I don't know if there's questions or not on this, but to me, distance is not a formal physics term. It's an English term. That means the total amount of ground covered, like the entire amount of space tra traversed, um, um, treating all traverses, traverses as equal. So first he goes a total of six, then he goes another total of six, and then he, so in other words, what I'm really doing is this. I'm doing the absolute value of negative six uh, plus the absolute value of positive six plus the absolute value of negative uh, nine. That's really in my head what I'm really doing to get that answer because that's what I think distance really amounts to. And I'm not writing down an equation or anything for it because distance is actually an English concept, not a mathematical thing, but 70. Oh, sorry. So, so wait, let me make sure of one thing. So there are some, I, if my fact, 
I believe this is the correct, correct answer if I wrote down the facts correctly. What I think is he went from four to negative two. So that, so that's first, that's what I mean. So he went from four to negative two, meaning he went six in the leftward direction, but he did go six. Then he went from negative two to four. So that's another six, like it's in the opposite direction. But if I'm just accumulating up distance in my mind, he went six, then he went another six, that makes 12. But then in the final journey, if I have this, oh, I see why you would, my diagram is bad because I just, I ran out of space. In the final thing, he's supposed to have gone all the way to the negative five. I just didn't, it says in the problem, I just didn't draw, oh, let me just put it. I think that's why there might be some confusion. So this is a bad picture, but if you read the, what the question says, whoops, sorry, what the question says is that he goes in the final step all the way from the, um, po see, my drawing is all terrible now, but he goes from the positive four all the way to the negative five, I think, which is a total of nine. So I think it's six plus six plus nine, making 21, I think. Does it, let me see the chat again. Oh, okay, okay, great, great, great. I totally appreciate and I totally see why that was, a, okay, so we're on the same page. Now, again, I'm giving you an English, I think the definition of distance is the sum of all the absolutes. Great, 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 all right, thank you. Awesome, I'm looking at the chat. Cool, cool, T totally fine, totally fine, okay. Um, and it, it, it's not formal math yet because distance is not really a formal math concept. But okay, that's, all right, that's the answer to that one. Then the next question, I believe is what's the total displacement for the whole thing, I believe. Now this one, I'm gonna say what I think the answer is and then I'm gonna start developing some actual mathematical notation. But I think the answer, I got it, sorry. I think the answer to this is negative nine. Um, and I'll write it like this. If, if the question is, and if I were doing homework right now to hand in, if I were doing homework to hand in, I would be trying to label these questions correctly and I'm not sure that I am. I think this is called question two. Please. Um, and I would write some indication down, like this question is asking for total displacement. Like I'm not copying the question, but I'm indicating what questions from t equals zero to t equals um, eight. So this is what the question is asking for. And what I think, and I'm gonna call this x minus x zero. I'll tell you why in a second. But what I think the answer, um, Yeah, my, sorry, I, my entire internet just went down. Right, I lost everybody. Right when I was saying, um, yeah, my connection just went down uh, on both my devices, but I think I'm back, yes, I'm back. Right, sorry. Um, so my thing went down right as I was saying. <sighs> One second, I just lost, I lost the. Oh, wait, what? Oh. Okay. All right, sorry, yeah, the entire thing dropped, but you all didn't, if you're here now, you didn't miss any, I missed the whole thing too. I, the, I, what uh, we were last saying before my connection dropped was, um, well, that the answer, I believe the answer is negative nine. 
I believe the answer is negative nine. Uh, there's a, a number of different ways to see it, but really what does displacement mean? It means how much were you displaced in total? It means what is the difference, the comparison between your final position and your initial position? Uh, well, the very final place he ended up was negative nine. I, I'm sorry, it was negative five. The very first place he started was positive four. So he was displaced nine in the leftward direction. Like that is what I'm saying the answer is. There's two ways to see it. Um, one way you could say is, is this. Like what, what total displacement is, is just like total display, it's just like total distance, except here we don't take absolute values. We do take into account directions. So it's negative six plus positive six plus negative nine. And, you know, these two cancel out. Just in a couple. Now, all we're doing is defining terms, right? In other words, we're kind of saying that when you look at motion, you could look at it two different ways. You can look at how much distance someone covers. That's one way of looking at things. Or you can look at it in terms of displacement. And it's one way takes into account, one way does not take into account direction. The other way does take into account direction. And we're not saying either, like for some circumstances, one is preferable and the other for other circumstances. So as long as your brain can allow for those two different ways of thinking of things, then we're just saying that we call the two different ways distance and displacement, right? So it's not actually new knowledge here and it's not anything like, as long as you get that sometimes we're caring about one or the other, that's all we're really saying. And I will of course admit that once physics really gets off the ground, we tend to very much care about direction. We do in physics care about the richer concept. We more often will pay attention to displacement than we will to distance because it includes both uh, distance and direction. So for that reason, I'm going to start defining some terms with notation so we can start do, being more mathematical about this. In other words, okay. Okay, from now on, we'll, we'll use x uh, or y. And, and by the way, it's supposed to be a lowercase x to tell you that you, uh, I should make that clear. Like if we use a lowercase x or a lowercase y, we, we mean the variable and we mean that variable, we use that variable to refer generally in physics to a position in space, a position in the one dimension of space that we're dealing with at a time, i.e. X is a coordinate along some X axis and X axis is any one axis that you want, just the one axis that you're looking at. Um, so in other words, from now on, X stands for a position, i.e. a point in space, and we measure it 
um, in meters from some zero that we pre-established, right? So your position could be three meters to the right of the prime meridian, or it could be two meters south of the equator, right? Um, and, and in one case, we might use a positive sign. In one case, we might use a negative sign, but we're always measuring positions from some zero and we measure them in things like meters. Whereas, whereas, and of course you know that, but now, but, we're, but okay, we still have to agree on it. And similarly, we're gonna use T to stand for uh, instant, like X stands for position, T stands for instant in time. So that's a coordinate on the time axis, okay? And that is to say it's a point in time measured in seconds from sum t equals zero. Actually, I should say, sorry, I should say this is measured from x equals zero, and this is measured from sum t equals zero. Sorry. Okay, triple equal sign. So I'm saying now, I mean, again, sort of the obvious, but we have to lay down, we all have to be playing with the same rules in order to do all these problems and solve those physics. Physics is motion of stuff through space and time, right? Um, whether that stuff be stuff on Earth or far away from Earth or of Earth itself, right? But motion is motion of stuff through space and time. From now on, we measure out points in space, uh, uh, we designate with the letter X or sometimes Y. Points in time, we designate with the letter T. Okay, both of those could be thought of as coordinates on some axis, um, and the axis will have some zero point that we decide on, and then everything on one side of that axis is positive, everything on the other side is negative. So then with that in mind, and of course, again, I know that you know that, but we just want to make sure we're all playing by the same rules. But then notation-wise, I'm going to say, then, then with those definitions in mind, then from now on, we're going to let x sub zero, okay, x sub zero, we're going to pronounce it x naught. Like if I ever see x sub zero written in a physics textbook or in the context of this class or something, if I see an x sub naught, sub zero, I'm going to read it out loud. And again, again, many of you know this if you took physics in high school, but if you didn't, there's no reason to know this. Um, I'm going to read it out loud as X naught, N-A-U-G-H-T. That's like the British word uh, that means nothing. So X sub zero is like X nothing. And what does it mean though? It doesn't mean the number zero, just to make this clear. And this is something that some people can go through an entire high school class with and have be wrong in their mind the whole time and not even realize it. What we mean by that is what X sub zero means is the value of X at t equals zero, okay? So x sub zero doesn't mean, x sub zero is the value of zero. No, it isn't, that was a talk. The, the x sub zero is the value of x. It's some position. It's the position of an object when t equals zero for that object, which I'll have to define in a minute what that means. But so in other words, what x sub zero is often called in English, the initial the, the initial or starting position of something. That's what we mean by x naught, okay? Um, um, x naught, x naught is not necessarily equal to zero, right? X naught might equal zero, or it might equal three or four or meters. It's some number of meters, but it is whatever, wherever we find an object at t equals zero. Well, what does t equal zero mean? That's a good question. Um, well, oh, oh, sorry, before I even say that, I'm sorry. Before I even say what t equals zero means, let me take one step further and say this notation that when we put a zero subscript next to something, that we read it this way and we mean this, this will now from now on in physics apply to any and all variables we ever might introduce. Like Z sub zero would be the value of Z at time equals zero. 
or or w sub zero etc so i'm going to say that in general i'm going to say like whoops, sorry squiggly like sub zero from now on will be the value of squiggle at t equals zero okay so what any variable we ever and we're going to use this a lot in um uh we're going to use this a lot so i better be clear and again the squiggle if you just tuned in right now that squiggle can really throw people off i'm just saying squiggle to mean any general variable anything you can imagine um so then so what is t what is t zero equal well, what do we mean by t sub zero well t sub zero must be the value of t when t equals zero, right? Just by our definition, I mean, right? Because the value of, because t is a variable. So t sub zero does, it is true that t sub zero will always be zero. It's not true that x sub zero will always be zero. And it's not true that any other variable you think of, v sub zero is not always equal to zero. But t sub zero is always equal to zero because by definition it means the value of time when time was zero. So the only thing left I have to answer about this is what the heck do I mean by that? What do I mean by the value of t being zero? So what is meant, that's supposed to be an M. What is meant by t equals zero? Well, I, t equals zero is like the beginning of time, right? But I don't mean, I, not to be silly, but I don't mean the Big Bang or something. And I also don't mean the Garden of Eden or something. Like t equals zero does not mean the beginning of objective absolute time for all time. Like, first of all, I don't even know what that is. Second of all, I don't know why I would care about that in any given experiment I was ever doing. What I mean by t equals zero is the moment I start paying attention to the, the moment I start my stopwatch, whoever I am, the researcher, the experimenter, the, and this sort of, then the reason for this sort of relates to the other lecture that you're going to watch, but I'm saying t equals zero means, oh, sorry, t sub zero means Literally, literally, T sub zero means the instant that the stopwatch, whatever stopwatch, the stopwatch held by the researcher who was getting the facts that are being described in whatever problem or experiment we're talking about, T sub zero means whenever the stopwatch started, which is to say, first of all, it's up to us. It's not objective. It is up to us, but we, ma we make a decision and then we stick to it. But second of all, it is to say, to, to give you a little inkling, it's what it really means to do a physics experiment. When you do a physics experiment, you don't really think of it as opening up and beginning an experiment, doing it, and then closing down and ending an experiment. We really think of it more as beginning to, we think of it more as the world is happening. The world, things are happening all the time. What, to do an experiment is to take data from the world, to collect data from the world. So when an experiment begins really means uh, like we start our stopwatch, like we start paying attention and let the numbers come in. And then at a certain point we stop our stopwatch and then we just use whatever numbers came in during that time. This, the, the, the span of an experiment is the span of us paying attention to the outside world. So the experiment begins when we begin paying attention and turn our watch. Um, um, uh, uh, so an example of that is we might be studying a pendulum, and we do, Galileo study a lot of pendulums, and we will in Physics 204. We might be studying a pendulum instead of starting the pendulum swinging and starting a stopwatch at the same time and driving ourselves crazy. We let a pendulum swing for a while, and then we start our stopwatch right when the pendulum is at some nice place, and then we take data from there, and then we stop our stopwatch at some... Okay, so, so T0 means whenever we start collecting data, and then any variable sub zero means the value of that, whatever that variable value is found to be, 
right at that moment, we turn on our stopwatch. Okay, again, like everything in physics may be obvious, but maybe not obvious that it would be important. So I have to say it. Um, with that in mind, I'm now gonna say, then from here on in, um, X, for any experiment we're doing or any amount of data we're collecting from now on X minus X zero is, and I'm, this is gonna go back, I know it seems like I'm on a wild, I'm just using the homework to lay down notation here. So this is gonna go back to the homework sheet in a moment, but I'm just using every question to establish some notation that can be common among us. So from now on X minus X naught would be like, in other words, final, some, some position once we stopped paying attention, minus some initial position, it's the difference between the difference be between location now versus, I'm sorry, not versus. Right, so where something is now minus where it was earlier, that's how much it was. That's what we ultimately mean by displacement, as long as we take into account all necessary proper negative signs. I'm saying from now on the English word displacement, from now on I'm gonna write with mathematical notation X minus X naught. Uh, you could, so a lot of textbooks will write it, You a lot of textbooks will write it like x, sorry, will write it like x2 minus x1, like a second position minus a first position, or some books will write it as x final minus x initial, all the same thing. It just means some position that you measure now versus some position that you measured earlier. What do you get when you subtract one from the other? The total change of position, the total displacement, the total amount that something was displaced can be negative or positive, right? I'm, okay, I'm gonna go on one step further and say then, then, actually, no, I'll wait on that. Let's go back to the, I'll go back to the homework now. Um, back to the homework. So the, the, I know we've only answered a couple questions. So uh, we've answered the total distance versus the total displacement. Total displacement from here on in is the more mathematical, precise, directional oriented quantity that I'm designating X minus X naught. So then I think the next question on the homework, the next question on the homework, I think was, um, what's the average speed for the entire journey? And I know everybody probably went to sleep. I'm gonna gather all your minds back now. We're back to the homework here. So I believe the next question I'm gonna answer is what's the average speed for the whole journey? But please someone correct me if I'm skipping a question or something by mistake. But I think the question is what's the average speed for the whole journey? Or could I get a thumbs up if that's the correct next question? And if it is indeed called Q3. And I pro oh, have I lost everybody. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. And thank and by the way, yeah, this is like a yeah, okay, thank you. Good. All right. So am I on the correct question? Question three, average speed for the whole journey. Is that is that I'm going to... Yeah, that's uh, correct. Great, thank you. All right. You know, it's, it's lonely up here in outer space. Okay. Um, but I know it's worse for you. I know. Um, and really, by the way, can I just tell everybody, I, I, I love physics so much, and I love doing this even on Zoom stuff, but even I, I love physics, and I'm not saying this material is easy or hard, but believe me, this physics, this material is painfully boring to me, too. I know how boring this is. We just have to get through it to get to where it starts building, and it really will soon. I don't know how to say anything better than that, but... Uh, but anyway, um, the average speed for the whole journey, uh, and well, all right, anyway, the average speed for the whole journey, I'm gonna say in English, I think I put this in the sheet, but I'm gonna define that to be the total distance that was covered throughout the whole journey measured in feet, divided by the total time of the whole journey. So to cut to the chase, to stop even boring myself, I believe the answer to that just by definition of the way we're gonna use these terms, I believe it's 21 feet over the total uh, of eight seconds, right? So first of all, that is a perfectly fine, acceptable answer. Like you literally could put average speed, and this is an English thing anyway, so you literally could put 
like average speed equals 21 feet over eight seconds and circle it, that would be an answer. Of course, you also could say, and, and, and you definitely do not have to convert these answers into meters, by the way, all of you. Like, like the question facts were given in feet, so that's what the answer facts should be given and unless like otherwise told, but you just wanna be consistent with whatever the measurements are. So 21 feet over eight seconds is perfectly fine answer. 21 feet per second, perfectly fine answer. But I could also say, this is just question three continued. I could also say um, that the average speed, and again, there's no formula or equation for this, it's just the definition in English. But I could also say that the average speed is two, uh, point, I guess, three, seven, five, uh, uh, wait, yeah, five eighths is, five eighths is, uh, why won't we, see? yeah, like this, yeah, uh, right? Um, someone better do this on a calculator, but uh, you, I think that's right. If you convert it to decimals, I'm actually just curious, could someone just check that on a calculator? I think that's, um, so you that's could, what like, I got to. phew, all right, awesome. Yeah, so yeah that's what I got as well. Phew, thank you. And thank you for paying attention. Great. So you totally could write that. It's a valid answer. You could also totally, like, because it does actually chop off at the five, you know, you might as well include all the digits because it's, you know, but if, if those digits went on forever, as they usually do in physics city, of course, you could do something like this would be, we're not hypercritical about significant digits unless it's in the lab. Like, that's a different thing. But here, any one of these would be perfectly a legitimate way to write it. It's just, but that's the answer. Okay, any one of these is totally fine. Um, then question, for, and it is definitely positive though, right? Because all I did was the total distance over the total time. And, and but one quick thing notice, again, as it begins to get more mathy, even when I have very little work to show, I really always do have some work to show because even in the simplest case, like this question, what I'm really doing is first, and this is a habit I want to develop for the mathy stuff, First, I write a definition. I write average speed triple equal sign distance over time. Like that's the definition I'm using here. Then I plug in the actual numbers for distance and time. And so it makes it a double equal sign. Like it always equals distance over time. Then in this case, it specifically equals 21 over eight. Even that alone is showing a ton of work because honestly, it means you just if it separates the physics from the math. If you postpone plugging in the numbers as the last step, it always separates the physics thinking from the math. So you can totally make arithmetical or computational calculational errors and still get tons and tons of credit for all the reasoning being correct, just, just to note that. But anyway, there we go. That's the answer to that one. So then now for question four, when it's now asked about average velocity, I'm now going to start. That's a more mathy, more precise physics concern. It includes direction. So I'm actually going to now define it in our new notation. Well, I'll, I'll say, okay, the answer to this one's going to be negative nine-eighths feet per second, or in other words, negative 1.125 feet per second. I oh, two people in the waiting room. Sorry, I'll just let them in. Um, I'll write that down in a second, but just, you know, if you're following along or whatever, if you, for the next one, the answer is a negative, and it is like nine over eight, I believe. Yeah. And so you can express that any way you want. But now, let me use that. To, I'm going to do it and I want to show you a piece of notation that we're going to use now. From now on, I'm going to say, from now on, V with a bar over it, V with a bar over it is defined to be, triple equal sign, defined to be this. Maybe I put this in the sheet, but maybe I, I don't remember. I'm going to say from now on, remember, we are physicists. We only got three things ever to care about, stuff, space and time, like for real, for real, for real. All we're ever looking at is stuff of some kind or another in space and time. All we're ever looking at, put another way, is kilograms in meters in seconds. Like that is what physics is about. Not necessarily easy, but definitely simple. So, so the very first concept of physics that, and we're spending like two weeks developing it because it is the fundamental. If we're going to study motion of stuff through space and time, then the first most sort of reasonable or like powerful thing that might even enter our mind ever is just the simplest possible ratio of space interval per time interval. Like, like our, in other words, how far something gets in a certain direction in a certain amount of time, as you can imagine. And, and, I'm, and usually this is measuring in meters and seconds. I know in this problem it's feet. Uh, I don't mean to be inconsistent, but um, the most simple direct ratio or combination of our two arenas, our space arena and our time arena, if you just look at the simplest possible ratio of one to the other, 
we get this quantity that we're going to call from now on average velocity, like, like average velocity of an object, the average velocity of an object is hereby from here on defined to be the total displacement that it undergoes, like not the distance, right, but the displacement, I'm using our new notation, the total displacement undergone in some corresponding total amount of time, which is x minus x naught over t minus t naught, like the most fair direct relation we can imagine. We do note, however, oops, sorry, we do note, however, from the previous page in our notation, like t naught is always zero. Like x naught is not always zero. In the case of this problem that we're looking at right now, x naught, x sub zero, happen to have been positive four, right? In this problem that we're looking at, the dude started at a position called four meters from the origin. So, so x sub zero is not always equal to zero, but t sub zero is for the like explanation I gave two minutes, 20 minutes ago. Therefore, certainly as a shorthand, we can always write this and I will. I'm always gonna just write x minus x naught over t as the simplest way of writing average velocity. But just note in the back of your mind, like it is a symmetric relationship. It really is just doing to the x's what we're doing to the t's only there's a simple way of writing it. Now this from now on is our definition of average velocity. I keep saying that and almost like laughing at myself because I mean, I sound like a kindergarten teacher, I know, but I really wanna emphasize that what we're defining here is not velocity. We have not defined velocity yet. We're defining something that sounds more complicated but actually is simpler than velocity. We're defining average velocity. To make that super, super clear, I'm gonna say, in fact, that from now on, oops, sorry, it's very wrong color. From now on, if I have any symbol, like the squiggly symbol, um, what I mean, and I put a bar over it, a line on top of it, then from now on, what I absolutely mean is the average value of squiggly, okay? Like, and again, you might know that from chemistry, it's totally fine. I don't mean this to be like a bit, but it is important that from now on, if we put a bar over something, we're talking about the average value of that thing. We have yet to, to define anything about its actual exact value at one point or another. We have yet to. Um, um, uh, uh, no. Just note, and again, I'm, I, just note that at this stage of physics, what I'm doing painfully in a way is I'm trying to very painstakingly walk through things that are obvious, but are, they're not obviously important. Like things that I know you all know are true and can accept, they're not supposed to be hard. But what I'm saying is these are the ideas that, that we use ferociously and like super literally like like we will never stray from these ideas once we lay them down as as our truths so so we're trying to highlight things that although you might have always known they were true you might not know how important it is to take them seriously okay i mean that's what physicists do so so what i'm trying to say right now is from now on if you see a bar over some uh variable letter like like v bar then what it's referring to is the average value of of v and what that necessarily means is a value that, ref, that refers to a whole span or interval or segment that exists between two points. I'm really trying to say in physics, sometimes we, oh, by internet, I just got a warning that my internet can, my internet may go down any second. I don't want it to, but, uh, 
Um, but if it does, I'll you know, do the same things last time. Uh, 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 um, just note that in physics, sometimes we make measurements at a point. You can measure a position of something at a point in time. And that's like, you'd be looking at coordinates. Uh, you'd be looking at a single coordinate in space at a single coordinate in time. But other times in physics, we measure some value between two points in time or between two points in space. Sometimes we're looking at points and sometimes we're looking at intervals and it's really important to know which one you're doing when it makes all the difference in the world frankly because points are exact but experimentally inaccessible and intervals are experimentally accessible but inexact you'll i'll get back to that but so there's advantages and disadvantages of both but anyway from now on average means referring to an interval so we're going to say and sorry if you want me to go back to that page i totally will just say the word i'll go back to that page but i'm then saying from now on fine we've got this new concept of average velocity being the displacement of some object per the corresponding time interval. And this means like average velocity. So average velocity from now on refers to it both to speed and direction, right? Average velocity contains the concept of speed and the concept of direction in it to speed and direction, i.e average velocity could be positive or it could be negative, right? An average velocity can be negative as I think you were about to find as you found out when you did over. And it doesn't mean anything psychedelic or weird. Like if something has an average velocity, well, I'll, I'll say that in a minute, but it can be positive or negative and, but what was it? And, um, oh, and it's measured, right? In meters per second or feet per second or whatever. So finally to, to finally get back to reality in this, and again, tell me if you want me to go back to that sheet. For this question, question number four, when it's asking, so now I can start being more mathematically. It's sort of saying from, I believe this question is from t equals zero to the value t equals eight. What is, right? We're asking the average velocity for the whole trip. That's what we're asked in this question. So what I do to show my work to do it, like, again, I'm pretending I'm doing the homework right now. And then next I'll pretend to grade your homework. No, 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 I really will. Um, I would write down that average velocity by definition always equals this. And I know I'm dragging this out. This is to show you what to do when things are harder. I would do this, right? And so then in this case, in this case, the thing went its final position that it all ended up at was negative five. It started off at position positive four. It did all that, and those are all in feet. It did all that in eight seconds. So this is, I'm gonna to go to the next number. And so I would say, So the answer is, and I know tons of you got this answer without thinking through everything I just said, of course, tons of you got this answer without talking about it for 15 minutes like I just did. Good, but please understand that what I just talked through is hopefully what just went through your mind super, super fast, right? I always start with a triple equal sign and then change it into a double equal sign. Like that's what it means to actually think these things through. Postpone numbers for last. Okay, so I got negative nine eighths feet per second, which you totally could write as negative 1.125 feet per second or negative 1.13, like approximately, but, but that's the answer. Okay, um, we're gonna go on. Are we good so far? Or, so to summarize what we have right now, oh, sorry, I'll go back if you want me to. So far, we have two kinds of quantities then. I mean, we have two arenas, space and time, but we're starting to make measurements and analyze things in space and time. So just to organize, and some of these things we're saying in English, and some of them I'm doing mathematically. Why? Because technically what's going on, excuse me, so far, sorry. This says types of measurement, although you couldn't possibly read that, but types of measurement, I just want to stop. I said, so far we have two types. And again, I know this is,
I'm not changing, I'm just moving it over. I'm sorry. Just want to clarify that we have one distinction we're making in our mind between scalar quantities and vector quantities. Vector quantities mean with direction, in effect. Scalar means just literally a pure number. You know what, I should, I'm sorry, I should say, I'm sorry, one more correction, just to make this clear for the reference. Scalars are just pure magnitudes, amounts. Like temperature is a scalar quantity, although we're not caring about it in this class. Um, but a vector quantity is a magnitude with and a direction. Okay, so we have that kind of distinction going on. We, but we also in our mind have a distinction between instantaneous measurements and average measurements. That's also happening in our mind. J just to try to, okay, so there's different ways to organize these ideas. This is one organization. I'm gonna keep going with the homework. Okay, we're almost at something interesting. But are there any questions so far? I mean, is this like, well, I'm not, I'll go one more step and then I think there probably will be. Uh, the, the next question, the next, actually, I mean, the very next question is, what's the average speed for the first five, uh, for the first five seconds? Is that, or could someone tell me, is that correct? I believe the next question is, what's the average speed for the first five seconds? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Great. All right, thanks. And that's literally question five. Yeah. Yep. Great. Thank you. You got. Um, I wait. Great. Okay. So, uh, average speed. Okay. Now I'm going to start. Hopefully, moving a little faster. Now that we've established all these definitions. Um, and do you notice, by the way, all of you? And um, you notice, like. Because I have a problem flipping back and forth between this and the actual assignment, just like uh, on the screen. But you notice that because you guys are helping me remind me exactly where we are in the questions, you notice that the way I'm trying to write it with horrible handwriting, I, I know, but I'm trying to write these things out so that literally you could just look at this and it would make sense on its own. Like, right, And that's the way you want to do homework. Like, I should be able to look at your homework and grade whether you're making sense or not, even if I don't have the sheet right next to me, right? I mean, it's the same idea because for whatever it's worth. All right, but anyway, average speed from t equals zero to t equals five. Okay, so this is more Englishy. It's not equation, but I want, I want distance over the time for those five seconds, right? So technically I'm gonna, all right, I don't really, I know you all know this. So I'm saying average speed triple equal sign distance over time. Therefore, in this case, average speed equals the total, the, the, the total uh, distance was 12 feet and the total time was five seconds. And so this one is necessarily a positive number. So this is the answer, right? 12 divided by five. You, you could say it like that. You literally could say it like that. Average speed is 12 divided by five. Or you can say average speed equals uh, 2.4 feet per second, right? Whatever you want. Uh, but do notice also to be technical or whatever. And again, I'm hoping that these things are not so hard right now, but I'm trying to use the not so hard stuff as a way of talking about how to do, like all the hard stuff should just be built from the easy stuff, right? So another technical point I just want to make is, you notice my final answers, as illegible as they are, but my final answers that I'm circling, I don't, uh, yes, they include units for one thing. And yes, I'm trying to be somewhat aware of significant figures and all that. But the real thing I want to say is whatever I'm circling as my final answer is a full, complete statement. It's a complete idea. That is, my answer is not 12 over 5. My answer is average speed equals 12 over 5. 
right? Like that is a complete sentence. There's always a, 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 a noun and a verb, so to speak. In other words, my final answer always has an equal side, I'm sorry, an equal sign in it. And it has both sides of that equal sign filled out. I'm literally saying something about the world in my final answer, even if it's like really boring or really soon. Oh, sorry, what? Oh, excuse me for one second. Okay, um, um, I'm just trying to say that, and again, it's always easier to practice these things when you think stuff is easy. So that's why I'm saying it now. A final answer cannot be 12 fifths any more than could a final answer in an English class or a history class, like your final answer to something can't really be George Washington, right? Your answer to something has to be something like, the first president of the United States was George Washington or whatever. It has to be an idea, something that has a verb and a noun. And in mathematics and science, what that really means is it has to have an equal sign in it. It can't just be a flying number or whatever. It's anyway, that's what makes it a discovery. But anyway, all right, that's the answer to that one. You could say 2.4 feet per second or 12 over five. Again, I know these are kind of exercise for a lot of people. Um, I should be flying through this. I should be getting faster and faster. So the next question is question six, which is now what's the average velocity? Okay, notice I'm gonna be able to write it and say it faster now because this is a more mathy thing. Like they're literally, so they're asking from T equals zero to T equals five. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. They're asking what's the average velocity, right? So I do what I always do, start with the definition. Average velocity in general is displacement over time. So I start with something that's true, and now I'm going to make it relevant rather than starting with something that seems relevant and trying to make it true, which is really what people do all the time and they shouldn't. Um, so now I change from my triple equal sign to my double equal sign, and I say, okay, the total displacement in those first five seconds, well, he, let, he ended at position positive four, having started from position oh, positive four, right? He did that in five seconds. Those are feet. These are seconds. So, and, just to make, you know, this is just to put perspective on things. What we're now saying is for some given motion, average velocity could be, po the average velocity for some motion could be positive. It could be negative. When it's negative, it just means it's something going to the left rather than the right or south rather than north or whatever, rather than whatever, whatever. Um, uh, and similarly, the average velocity for some motion could be zero. And it doesn't mean you didn't move. It means you made a round trip, right? We're literally, in, right? I mean, that's what happened here. If you end up where you start, we call that a round trip, even if it's in one dimension where like nothing's actually round. If you end up where you start, we call that a round trip. And what we just sort of discovered here, if you think about it is necessarily, well, I'm saying this necessarily, as in always necessarily, for any round trip, for any round trip, or what we're really gonna call, or for now in physics, what we'll really call closed path, same idea. If you end up where you started, right? For any trip that started at the same place it ended, then necessarily X minus X naught will always be zero and therefore x minus x naught over t, no matter how long it took you, will always be zero. In other words, your average velocity for any round trip is necessarily zero. Just like wanna make that clear, you know, explicit. Um, for any given trip, your average velocity could be, should I ask this already? Do I wanna? No, I'll keep going. Uh, just to say, for any given trip, if you measure average velocity and average speed for any given trip, just make sure this makes sense in your mind, what I'm about to say. Um, for any given trip, your average velocity could be small, less than or equal to your average speed, but your average velocity could never be greater than your average speed. I'll just say that one more time. Just, like, if that makes sense to you, then we're all on the same page. I'm saying for any given journey, no matter how complicated or simple, if you measure the average speed of that journey and you also measure the average velocity and compare them it's always possible for the average velocity to be equal to or smaller than the average speed it's always possible that the average velocity would be equal to or smaller but you would never have a situation where the average velocity is greater 
than the average speed. Just again, because average velocities can be negative and average speeds cannot. Uh, all right, but so these are the answers so far. I think we have five more minutes. Um, um, I, we well, yeah, right, let's, uh, let's, I really want to get to the next sheet. If I know we have five minutes, so could someone, I'm going to try to just now say the, the next ones get a little bit more tricky, I guess, but let me say the answers in case we run out of time. I mean, I'll write down the answers so y'all can look and then I'll try to explain. So could some, but I'm going to need your help, you, the class. Could you uh, remind me what the very next question is? I think it's position at something, but could someone remind me question six? What is the distance one. covered by the instructor as he moves from negative two to four feet, which is the middle two seconds? Oh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Right. So in other words, from, thank you, from t equals two to t equals four, right? I know it said it different, but it was middle two, wait, the middle two seconds? I'm sorry. Oh, the middle. Uh, it's negative two to four. Oh, from, but, uh, okay, okay, sorry. Oh, right, right, right. I'm sorry. Okay. From, from X equals negative two to X e equals one more time to negative four, you said, or four, uh, yeah, to four. from negative two to, ne uh, no, to four. four. Okay. Sorry. All right. So now this is funny. What it's asking here is what is the displacement? Yes. Is it, sorry, tell me the question one more time. I want to make a big point, but I want to make sure I'm making the right point. Tell me the question one more time. What is the- Distance covered by the, oh, the distance from negative two to four. Oh, sorry. Okay, so the distance covered from negative two to four, I'll just say, sorry, is six. Okay, the distance covered from negative two to four. I mean, he goes six meters. He happens to go in a particular direction, but I don't care if it's just asking for distance. Okay, so the distance is six. I'll just say, I'm going to- and if this que if you're ever in the middle of a problem and a question seems all of a sudden strangely easy or something, it's, which this one kind of is comparatively, you might think it's a trick question, but most of the time that's not the point. Most of the time, if suddenly a question seems easy, it's because we're directing your attention to that information as a hint that you're going to now use that information like in some subsequent step. Like all these little sub questions are always meant to direct your attention somewhere. So like a video game or something. So, so don't get freaked if something suddenly seems kind of straightforward. It doesn't mean it's, but anyway, that's what's happening to me right now. The distance is positive six feet. It has to be positive because distance always is. Okay, that's the answer to that one. Whoop, that's the answer to that one. I'm gonna keep going. Question seven then, could, and who, I'm sorry, who was it that just told me that? Like who, was it Kimber? No, who was it that yeah. just told me? Oh, okay, okay, great. So can I just stay with you if you don't mind since you're on? Can you keep going for me and tell me question seven? Yeah, so it's displacement from negative two to four. Oh, okay. So now, all right. Thank you. All right. So now we're doing from, uh, to, sorry, from x equals negative two to x equals positive four. We Now we want to know what's the strict displacement. Well, again, it is literally, it's four, it's four minus minus two, which does equal positive six again. If the thing had gone the other direction, this time we'd get a negative, but we don't, we just get positive six again. It's not meant to be a trick. It's just trying to show something. So that's the answer to that one is positive six feet. Then if you don't mind, I'm gonna stay with you, Kimberly. What's question eight? Average speed from negative two to four. Okay, so now it wants the average speed for that whole interval. Okay, from for that same interval. Okay. Yeah, which took two okay. seconds. Thank you. That saved me a lot of time. Okay. Okay. So it's six over two. It's just positive three. Again, this is not. I know we're just trying to. So the answer is three feet per second. Um, I feel like at some point there's a question here that does require some thought, but okay, question nine, could you tell me? Average velocity now for the okay. same. So that's the same again. Then the answer to question nine is the exact same answer again. The average velocity is going to be positive three feet per second. It could have been negative if the thing were going in the other direction, but it wasn't. So that's the answer to that. And then is there, a, I know we're just about out of time, but I want to get to the, is there a question? There is, can you tell me the next question? Um, uh, average speed during the final three seconds of his journey, which okay. is 
from Thanks. four to negative five. Thank you. Okay, this is where we're gonna, I'm gonna do this one quickly. I know everybody has to go to community hour or whatever. I'm not, I'm gonna hang here. I'm gonna finish this quickly. And then I'm gonna give, I'm gonna shout out a couple of answers to the next sheet for satisfaction for people. Um, so bear with me for like two minutes if you all can. I mean, totally don't if you can't, I mean, go if you have to. But um, I just wanna give you your money's worth in a way. Like the, oops, sorry, the, so the average, oh yeah, yeah. The next, but let me finish on this question. The, the, this question was, what's the average speed um, for, uh, for the last, was it for the last three seconds? Is that what you said? No, sorry, for what? Yeah, yeah, it's the last oh, yeah. three seconds, which is oh, from great. four to negative five. Right, 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 okay. Um, um, I'm gonna write it like this, but I totally see what you're saying. Again, I apologize to everybody, this is going slightly over time, but, but this is now, I have to admit, I think at this point in the homework, this is where you, it, it's at least multi-stepped now. Like now you would have to think a couple of steps and maybe do one of our equations a little bit backwards to get this right. So this is where you start having to think a little bit, not a little bit more anyway, because, and she, Kimberly just sort of gave something very important away. I mean, she showed how she thought about this correctly. Um, that is, the question is, what's the average speed from t equals five to t equals eight? So indeed, I, it's asking, what's the average speed for the last three seconds? Okay, I know the time is the last three seconds. But in order to get the distance, I would have to know where this thing, well, I, I, I have to know where it is at each of those points. Now, careful reading of the problem, which is what Kimberly did, will show me, like she said, that is, I want to know uh, from uh, where is that position, um, uh, negative five feet, he goes to the very end, the very beginning again, positive four feet. In other words, I think, in other words, the distance, all right. In other words, the dist the, the average speed for this whole thing is, um, is a, a, a distance of nine feet in a time of three seconds. So the average speed is three feet per second again, I believe, unless I'm saying something wrong, uh, but do you agree, Kimberly? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's actually, it's the opposite. So it's from four to negative five, which is going to be for the next question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, you're absolutely right. Oh, God. Oh, that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And actually, that's a relief because what I was doing was incredibly stupid. Um, uh, right. It, the last three seconds actually goes from, right, from positive four, you're absolutely right, to negative five. So the, abs the displacement is negative nine. So the velocity is, but what, what, sorry. So the, this, the average speed is still three because average speed does not care any more than distance does about direction. But if I were to then ask, which I hope the next question is, if I were then to ask um, what's the average velocity for that whole thing, the average velocity would be negative three feet per second. Uh, and I'm sorry this is taking, uh, there's still yet another question, right? There has to be. Is there still another, there's one more question to the sheet, right, or no? Yeah, there's two more. Oh, two um, more. Right. Yeah, so it's, right. what's the, oh, do you want me to read it? Oh, no, yes, and I'm saying to everybody again, I know I'm going over time. If anybody leaves right now, I will not consider it rude at all. It's totally understood. But I'm finishing this now for anybody, and even if no one could stay, I'm finishing this now basically for the sake of the recording, so you could hear, so I do, but I am gonna just finish this for anybody who wants to know, et cetera. So again, please feel free to leave if you have to, but bear with me. Otherwise, I'm just going to finish these answers and I'm going to say a couple answers from the next sheet um, that are interesting and then we'll, and then I'll go. But, um, but thank you very much for your patience and, and Kimberly in particular, thank you. Uh, so the very next question is what? Uh, where is the instructor at the mm. seventh second? Okay, now finally this now, okay. And it took this long to get here. here now. It's a totally fair question. It doesn't need any new equations or anything, but you do have to like invert one of the equations or, you know, think through multi-step to do this. So where is, so it's very fair if someone didn't, but it's not new knowledge. It's just thinking about the old knowledge. So where is instructor at, uh, you said at t equals seven. Is that right? No, at t equals? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, oh, okay. But actually this, if you just actually just have to sort of read the problem very carefully, the answer is x equals um, ne uh, negative five, right? Um, that's the answer to that. But then question 12, what's, what's the next question? 
or or did, am I wrong? I mean, is that? Um, I don't know how. Like, I would like if you could go over that. Um, oh, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, different. Oh no, sorry. Uh -huh. Wait, I'm totally wrong. Wait, no, you're absolutely. Thank you. I'm going too fast. No, no. I was thinking of a t equals six. You're no, 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 no. I'm totally sorry. Sorry, that's not right. It is a more interesting. This is the interesting question. Sorry, I'm just getting so concerned about time. If it's asking where is the instructor at t equals seven? No, the answer, the answer, um, what is this? Right, that's the second to last. Right, the answer to that one. The answer is. It's the second to last second. So everyone he did negative three. So for that one, it's the answer is x equals negative two feet. Is that what you got? Yeah, it's around there. I did like more math, but like I was unsure if you were supposed to round it or no, not. No, no, so. this is good. Okay, this is where one does have to do math. This is where it's so bad that this is like right at the end of the period where no one can pay attention. But honestly, this one, you have to think, one has to use the answers that one got up until this point. In other words, and I, and I think, I mean, unless I'm going too fast again, I don't think it's a rounding thing. I think it is exact, but here we go, we'll see. What I'm saying is you look at that very last, okay, so we zoom in on, we zoom in, zoom in on last segment of the whole journey, that last segment from, from T equals five to T equals eight, where we all are saying that, um, where we said he goes from uh, negative five all the way back. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, no, where we say he went uh, from positive four, he went from positive four all the way back to negative five, right? We're looking at that particular segment because they're asking about, they're asking about T equals seven. So they're asking about the sec, like the very last segment, the very last second of the very last segment is what they're asking about. And so what we know is that for this segment, what we just figured out above is that for this segment, the average velocity is negative three feet per second. What we know is that on average for this segment, every second that elapses, this dude progresses three in the feet in the leftward direction. Like that's what we figured out a couple of questions ago. So that means like at t equals five, there he was at the position. So at the beginning of this, at, at the beginning of this final chapter, he's standing there at positive four. One second later, he'll be at positive one because he's retreating three every second. So one second later, he'll be at positive one and then but that's t equals six. So then another second later, which brings us to t equals seven, he'll be um, at negative two, like he keeps subtracting three every second. And so then finally, in the very final moment, it all works out and he's at position negative five. In other words, what I'm really saying to anybody who's still with me, and I do appreciate it, I'm saying now we're not introducing a new idea, but we are inverting an idea we already had. We figured out the average velocity. Um, we figured out average velocity for the segment. And since we know that average velocity is displacement per time, we're now rearranging that and saying, oh, we could figure out the displacement by multiplying average velocity by time. Like that, um, uh, that's literally what I'm doing here, if that makes sense to anybody. Um, so it's kind of just trying to now enforce, oh, once we believe these equations, where they started as just definitions, they just started as words, but once we believe them as equations, it means you can write them in either direction. I mean, A equals B means B equals A. So I believe the answer to this very last, the answer to this, the answer to this one is X equals negative two. Maybe I'm now saying it too fast. Maybe people want to think about that at home. I don't know. X equals negative two is the answer to that. And so I believe they asked one more final question on the whole sheet, I think. Um, um, and I know Kimberly's been totally on the spot this entire time and I totally apologize. But can you tell me the very, very last question of the sheet? Yeah, um, so it's average velocity from T equals three to T equals seven. Okay. So right, this is the final big, it's not the hardest thing in the world, but now it's one more step that we have to put everything together. But if we get this right, then we know we understand everything. Yeah, what's the average velocity from, and I'm sorry, say it one more, oh, from T equals three to T equals seven, is that right? Yes. 
Okay, so this is like as hard as it could be for this whole setup because we're picking now finally a completely arbitrary segment in the middle, like uh, uh, where things are unknown. But we're just going to do our definition. Our average velocity is displacement per time. Okay, so we want, uh, we know that in this case, the time is four seconds. Oh, I'm writing that too fast, sorry. We want the displacement for those last four seconds from t equals three to t equals seven. What we need to know in order to figure it out is what the positions were at t equals three and t equals seven. But that's basically what we just figured out. Like in other words, v equals, well, the final position at t equals seven, we just figured is negative two. And the initial position at t equals three, I, that position was a negative, um, uh, negative two, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Why? Because I read the, okay, thank you. Right, just from reading the problem correctly, like it's uh, carefully, it says that in those first three seconds, he goes from positive four all the way to negative two. So, so the position at t equals seven is negative two. The position at t equals three happens also to be negative two. We all do that in this uh, four second interval, but it actually turns out I don't care because the numerator of this fraction is indeed zero. So zero over four. So the answer to the final question, and technically we're trying to now put together all these ideas, right? We're saying, oh, in that final question, if you really think everything through, you'll realize that he ends up where he starts. So it's a round trip. So that's a case. So the average velocity for the very last question is zero. That's the final answer. Okay, I know I went a little fast on those or a little slow at the beginning. Um, let me just add one more thing just to keep everybody, if you go to the next sheet, on the next sheet, there are a bunch of average speed. And don't worry, I'm not about to all go all into it. But the first couple of questions are warm up exercises, basically plugs in, plug ins. But if you tried any of this homework at all, you may notice that question two and question three of the next sheet are where things look maybe very straightforward. But I'm going to tell you, well, I'm going to tell you right now the sheet average speed for question, I just want everybody to know for question, I believe it's two, which is called a hill figure or something like that, where you have something going up a hill at 40, I'm not gonna go over this now, I'm just gonna say the answer if it, because it'll make a difference to some people. In that problem where you go, and if you still haven't done it, you can still totally do it, even though I'm about to say the answer, because you're gonna have to show why this answer is true either way. For that problem where you go up at 40 and you come down at 60, the same hill, and the, and the question is asking, what's the average speed for the whole round trip, right? I believe the question is, what's the round trip average speed. I just want to say to everybody that the answer to that is 48 my, um, whatever uh, miles per hour or whatever the units are. It's 48. It's not 50. If you put 50, you are a responsible person who is doing her or his homework. And by the way, if you put 50 and you hand in the homework, don't like think you have to correct it and unsubmit your homework or something. No problem. But I just want everybody to know so that there's something to look forward to next Monday or something. The answer is not 50. It, the answer is 48. And I will go over it. But the first reason why it's not 50 is the average speed is defined to be total distance over total time. That's our definition. We have never yet said that average speed, we, we will never say that average speed is defined to be the average of any speeds. Like if you're taking a 40 and you're averaging it with a 60 and getting a 50, you're doing something that's mathematically responsible somewhere. But we never said to do that here yet. Average speed is defined to be distance over time. It's not defined to be average of speeds. The answer is not 50, it's actually 48. And the simple reason is because the, the guy actually spends a lot more time going 40 miles an hour than he does going 60. So it's like really a weighted average, whatever, whatever. But it, just knowing that that's the answer, if you got it right, you're then rock on and that's great. And I'll have much more to tell you next week. But it is same thing with the little red riding hood, the next problem, the next problem on that sheet. So again, if you got these wrong, just it's something to go back and think about now. So, you know, but if you got them right, great. Um, the, but the next question, and again, you can rehand in anything or whatever, but the next question, Little Red Riding Hood, same issue occurs. You're asked, what's the, what, how fast must she go on the way out in order to make the whole round trip equal to uh, 80 or something like that? The answer is not 120 or 160 or anything like that. The answer to the Little Red Riding Hood problem is infinity, like literally, like the only speed she could do on the way out in order to satisfy the requirement of the question. The only thing she could do, oh cool, wow, um, is get there in no time whatsoever. I will prove all this Monday, If I mean, believe me, 
and again, this is not to shame anybody, but just to say that there might be something to look forward to in the course that, that if you take these ideas seriously, you will get in infinity speed for the very last question on average speed sheet and you'll get 48. And I'm saying you, there's a way to show yourself. It's not, I'm not pulling it out of here. Anyway, you've all been extremely patient. I just went 15 minutes over time. I totally know that. I owe you that 15 minutes somehow. Please, um, especially if you've been hanging out, then there's no need to watch this lecture, but please watch the other lecture that I'll get posted tonight. And I will start returning homework and posting more, just keep your eye out. But, but if you've done all the sheets so far, then you know it's gonna take me at least a day to get through the rest of the sheets. So if you've done all the sheets, I wouldn't break your, break your back doing any more sheets for a little while. But that's it for right now. It, um, I could, I, I, uh, if there are any, I could quickly answer a question if there are any, but I'm good if you guys are good. Um, I just, I, Professor, I sent you an email yesterday that it never got back to me. Oh, sorry, okay. Um, let me, uh, um, is it some, is it, okay, hang on one second, wait. I think you, could, to... you can get back to me later, it's fine, there's no rush. Oh, I appreciate it, okay, uh, but it is a, um, okay, I will just do that. Uh, I will, I do have a, one more class at it, but I, all right, thank you for alerting. Wait, you are, you are Arlene, yes? Doreen. No, I'm sorry? Doreen Talas is on. Oh, 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 I see it. Okay. Okay. I will look for that. I apologize. I, and it is a problem with me. So I appreciate that you're telling me. I will, I will, as long as you're saying it actually wasn't an emergency from yesterday or something, I will deal with it right after my next class. And, and okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we're good. Oh, let me look in the chat. Oh, oh, oh no, thank you. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, okay. So, all right, cool, cool. All right, you guys are great. All right, or are you guys good? The last four, Sabrina, Marissa, um, uh, Elizabeth, Brian, you guys are good. You're just waiting for me or you're good? Okay. Um, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, right. we're good. Have a good one, Professor. Bye. Oh, you, you too. Thank you very much. You too.